We are down here in Texas chasing sheep. And wasn't super familiar with the terrain we were gonna be hunting down here. They call it Texas Hill Country for a reason. <laughs> There's definitely some hills. And uh, this terrain is it's not super high, but it's steep, man, you'll sweat. had quite a go at getting to this point. We actually had started with two elk tags out of New Mexico. We get a message that it got canceled, no tags available. So we started worrying and stressing out a little bit uh, and hustling to try to find something else to do. So we reached out to our buddy down here in Nevada Grassy, the Cryptek Carver. If you don't know who Nevada Grassy is with his skull carving, you better check that out because it's quite impressive. And we're like in the hill country, it's like the, the mecca of freaking exotics and cool animals to hunt like almost all year round. We reached out to our buddy, see if he could pull something together for us, and he did. And he came through in a big way with some uh, Uriel sheep. So we get up early at Nevada's house. We get out to the hunt, it's overcast and drizzling. And we're trying to start glassing for stuff and looking for animals and it's just, you know, fogged in a little bit. So we really had to wait it out because we were looking for these things, you know, anywhere from three, four to 600 yards out. We're gonna move up to the, to the left here and get down in this low ground. So we ended up having to wait for a couple hours till we even had an opportunity to start seeing animals. Tell you what, these things don't stay still for long. They didn't, they didn't give us much opportunity. So we ended up having to hustle back and get around the other side of this hilltop or, or mountain, if you will, to potentially get ahead of them and then get a position where we could make the shot. Did you get him? Did you get the hit? We packed up our gear and started to head down across the, the ravine there that we shot across. It was pretty steep. It, did, it wasn't a long hike, but I'll tell you what, man, you were darn near you know, using your hands at a few points and it was still like the, the, the shale was super loose. So it was a little almost treacherous, but we got up there. And uh, let me tell you, 
Look how big this is, man. That thing was way bigger than it looked through the glass. It was uh, it was pretty awe-inspiring, and I was like super stoked for Dustin. <sighs> we just shot a ram, a big ram, <laughs> a big ram. <laughs> Had him come through a little higher than we thought, but Dustin got on a pretty doggone quick, and Nevada and Joey called it out where they were coming, gave us a spot to aim, and got them executed <laughs> with purpose. That's awesome. That thing is huge. Yeah, yeah. He's all scuffed up and it's some a fighter and everything. So we got Dustin's ram packed up. Made our way down the mountain without falling, which was, was a plus, so we didn't have to bring in any medical help. So <laughs> got it back down. It was probably 10, 30, 11 by the time we got off of there. We were trying to figure out what to do next, whether we are just gonna continue to glass, but we decided, you know what? This guy's also gonna let us you know, hammer some pigs if we see him, and if we happen to see some rams, we'll do some business. That cedar's pretty dense, so to get in there was next to impossible to try to find any of these things. So we just kept glassing, looking for some stuff, and lo and behold, we saw a couple of ewes. I'll tell you what, the girls give you away every time, guys. Every time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> We did see the ram I was after, and uh, at about the same time we saw him, he saw us, and the chase was on. They started working up the mountain. We tried to go around the mountain, look and catch them on top. By the time we got to the top, they turned around and went back the other way. Uh, so we came back off the mountain. We did a pretty quick setup to try to get an opportunity to shoot. Again, the terrain and vegetation being super thick next to these trees that gave us a, a good view of the mountainside that they were on with some open patches here and there. All right, he's coming in from the right. Mom waiting on that opening. All right, I see, I see his head. I got him. Yeah, he's staggering a little bit. He's going off to the right there in the bushes. Keeping that up, Nevada. You still see him? I got him. Okay. I'm on him. He's hit. All right. I think he's going. He's tipping. He's tipping. He's tipping. He's tipping. Yeah, he's, 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 he's down. Done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One shot. Got it done. So we packed up. Head across the creek and up an even frickin' steeper hill than the one we went up on Dustin's. So we climb up the mountain, get to the ram, and got to work cleaning him up. You know, got a few pictures, you know, and, and checked him out. Trans-Caspian Uriel? Is that how you say it? Trans-Caspian Trans Uriel. Not a tran. Not a tran. <laughs> trans -caspian. Good solid ram, about 30 inches, and uh, yeah. very exciting time for me to be able to harvest a Uriel ram. I'm grateful to Rocky Mount Precision for giving us the opportunity, and to Nevada Grassy for just getting it all set up. Super, super stoked. <laughs>